Well, welcome to Saturday, April 20th. <laughs> I just got done earlier this morning uploading the reveal video for the pumping station. That project's done, put away, and we're getting ready to start on our next project. This here. This is part of our courtyard. We have uh, two panels. They have a full-size screen that goes in on them, and we project different things on that people can go by. And this panel here is special because it has hinges on it. Three of them. One there, one there, and one there. This is the panel that goes across our front steps and creates a secret door. This is how we get in and out of the house when the haunt's set up. There's no way to really get to the back once the fencing goes in. Uh, they need some work. They're probably about four years old. Four, maybe five. But they're getting pretty crummy. They're getting dinged up, marked up. You know, the foam here, the seam on the foam has split. So we're going to take that off and we're going to do some new foam on there. I'm going to do a new pattern. So I'm going to do that on this one and the other panel, which is still sitting outside. Plus, I've got to go through here and clean it up. You can notice up here, staples. Lots of staples. And that's from stapling the screen material on every year. i got to go through and get those pulled out. There's getting to be too many staples. Some of them are getting loose. Like this one here. You know, and you go to drag it around or move it around, you snag on that and end up cutting yourself. So, you know, it's just time to clean them up. So we're going to do some recarving, repainting, and removing staples on both this panel and the other panel. Should be a fairly quick and easy project. Oh, we're down toward the end of the day of day one. Uh, ended up with a little bit more work than I thought. I started taking apart the old wall panels. I uh, took the foam off, got the plywood off, got the plywood cleaned up because it had a row of staples Several years worth across there. And on that panel I had to take the hinges off. I ended up being able to save the hinges and save the plywood. The plywood is the backer for the foam. The framework on the other hand, I could not save. Uh, once I took the plywood off, it just started falling apart. Those frames were made back in 20... Or what was it? 2010, thereabouts. They were some of the original framework that I had made for the haunt back then. And I've just been repurposing them. They're my only large panels I've got. Everything else is two foot and one foot now. But originally I had one, two, three, and a five foot panel that I used to wall off my haunt. My haunt was a lot smaller back then. And I went down and made, uh, went and repurposed them into one and two foot panels because of storage. They were, it was harder to st uh, store so many odd sized panels. And I kept two of the five foot wide panels uh, to go in what we call the courtyard area, which is up by our front porch for the purpose I've been using them for. So it was time to replace the frame. So I got in here today, got everything cleaned up, got rid of the stuff that was garbage, and we made up new frames, and I got the plywood attached to them. That's as far as we're going to go today. With my, the other panels I had, I, you know, I carved it and they wanted it to break apart. So what I've done is I've gone through and reinforced it. Started out using Gorilla Tape. It holds things really good. But I ran out here, so I ended up having to use some cheapy duct tape. But I ran over the scores on the back sides on both panels with some tape to help reinforce it. Now, I've got to figure out what I want on the panels. In other words, what do I want to carve? Do I want brick? Do I want stone? Do I want some sort of detailed design? What? I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. But I think I'll get the set dresser out here. And we can bounce ideas off of each other and see what's what. But then I gotta start laying the pattern out and we gotta carve these two. Which won't take long. It's only two panels and they're only five foot by four foot. 
It's not like what I'm doing wall pan. Uh, said dresser just went in the house. She was out here and we were discussing the foam panels and what pattern I should carve on them. I had three or four different ideas and we were both kind of talking. And I got to thinking the old pattern I had scream and horror running diagonally across the panel and I did a brickwork with some blood drip pattern up on top. I love the look of them. I had a ball. It was a lot of fun carving and painting those. <sighs> Problem is, they when I had done those prior to doing the wall panels for the courtyard area. So they really didn't fit. The horror and the screen panels didn't match or fit the wall panels. So, set dresser and I did some talking. Why not carve this in the same pattern as the wall panels? So they blend in and they match. Uh, the caveat is, is the wall panels have LED lights in them, in, uh, in the eyes for the ram's head. And I still have the... Uh, I believe the pattern for the ram's heads. But why not copy that pattern onto here so they match that way. I'm at a quandary as to whether I want to try adding lights to them though. Uh, the quandary I'm having with it, one it's way more work because I'm going to have to make up more LEDs <laughs> which will take some time. Uh, but one of the panels is stationary. The other panel, and it's the panel out here, this back one, has hinges on it. It's a doorway. And we open and close this door a lot. Uh, the lead for the power, if I add lights to it, would end up being flexed a lot. And I don't know if the, the power line for it would hold up or not. I don't know. But, uh, uh something to think about. <laughs> I can carve it just so it looks like that, but don't add lights to it. But I don't, I think it needs to have lights too. But I think for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get that pattern laid out on the foam get the foam carved, and think about whether I want to add lights to it or not. I also got to check downstairs. I don't know what I have uh, as far as LEDs go for doing this. And I do need to kind of get a count on how many, how many LEDs I would need to see if I have enough I, I don't want to order parts. I don't want to order resistors. And I don't want to order LEDs and stuff for this. So, I don't know. Oh, I'll have to see what I got for parts. But I think we're going to duplicate that pattern onto the foam. And then we'll go from there. Oh, we're about ready to get into the messy part of it. We got layout done. I'm not sure, really sure how well this is showing up with the glare. Uh, put it over here, get the cord out of the way, but anyway, that's what we're going to be carving. And it's the same exact, well, almost exact pattern. I ended up lengthening a couple of rows of brick off to the side, but same pattern as that. Now, I've got two different depths. I've got the grout line, which is, will be the deepest. And then I've got the uh, the backdrop for the rams that need to be cut, which is slightly shallower. Once I get these carved and I do a little bit more thinking, I'm going to, if I decide to install lights in here, I am also going to have to carve the back, a channel for the wiring and the lights to go in. And I still haven't gotten that far. I did check. I have plenty of LEDs uh, downstairs to do the project. You know, and other supplies needed for doing lighting on these. So 
so if I decide to do the lighting, we'll be able to. But that's down the road. Right now, I need to get these carved and uh, make my mind up on things, and then we'll see where we're at. All right, now that the carving's done, we've got two panels with the ram's heads on them and the brick. So they look, for the most part, like that. Major difference is I haven't heat treated. You notice it's got kind of a rough surface. And to heat treat, I have shown this several times before. Use a spray bottle full of water and a heat gun. And basically, I just go over and go over and mist the surface of the uh, brick, and then run the heat gun over it. And it gives that rough texture, which is what I want. And I think I heat treated, yeah, I did kind of heat treat the brick too, so or where the ram's heads are. So uh, now it's on to heat treating. Another step done went, actually two steps done, and it went fairly quick. Uh, both panels have been heat treated, and I've also gone through and poked the holes in the foam that the LEDs will sit into it, basically using an old soldering iron. Works perfect for that. Uh, now I've got first, uh, the first one up on the table. Uh, I need to create a channel from the holes, or for the holes, uh, for the wiring to go into. Uh, I'm just going to do one long daisy chain. We'll probably start at that one, go up, over, down, over, up, over, you know, and so on, until, you know, all the holes are joined with a small channel that the wire will lay into and what have you. Now, I did do a, a change on here. In fact, you can probably see the ghost of it here. Uh, in an earlier segment, I mentioned about putting uh, some Gorilla Tape along through here to uh, strengthen the seam so the foam doesn't want to separate as easy. Uh, at the time, I didn't have my pattern figured out. I didn't know what I was doing. So I went ahead and put the Gorilla Tape on. With having to carve a channel for the wiring on the foam, I can't have the Gorilla Tape there. So I ended up having to take it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the LED work done. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll come back through and I'll re-put on the uh, Gorilla Tape over the seams to help strengthen it. So I wasted a little bit of Gorilla Tape, but, you know, oh well. Went down, bought more. <laughs> anyway, uh, time to get this laid out. And it's going to take a while to go through and sketch this out. And then i got to go through and carve it. So don't know if I'll get it done today, tomorrow, next year, or when. But we're going to get it done. Okay, uh, confession to make here. Since I shot the last segment, just over two weeks have gone by. <laughs> And I'm just now getting to the point where I got the channel for the LEDs carved in the back and the primer coat on, which is what I think I mentioned in the last segment. Reason for the two-week hiatus. Kind of Morgan's fault in a sense. Uh, she asked me a couple of weeks back to take her down to the game store. She wanted to get some new Switch and Wii Nintendo games. Big mistake. She got her games, which is a good thing. You know, I'm, that's not the mistake. My mistake is I got to looking around, too, and I ended up picking up Hogwarts Legacy. Ugh, Hogwarts, yes, Harry Potter. Uh, I'd seen it advertised and what have you. I thought it was going to be kind of cheesy. I said, to hell with it. You know, I just wanted something to dink around with in the evenings while I wasn't working out here. I got it home. It's a really, really good game if you like RGP uh, style games. Uh, Storylines are really well done. The graphics are done really good. Gameplay is excellent. So a little bit of a shout out for Nintendo I guess. But I've been doing that and it's just finally getting to the point is I need to get out in the shop. <laughs> I'm down toward the end of the game anyway so. Uh, so we're back out here now. But now that i got the channels carved, both panels have been primer coated. I primer coated them this morning, 
We had 89 today. Primer coat's done. During the winter, when I do my painting out here, I have to let them dry a day or two. This time of year, when it's warm like this, I don't have to. It goes real quick. So I think I come back out and we're going to start working on the grout lines. In fact, let's see if I can flip this over without breaking it. And it's upside down naturally. But we're going to start doing the grout lines, which are black, according to my test panel I brought in. So we're going to get the grout lines done on both panels and then just go from there. Ah, uh, basic assembly is done. Panels have been laid out, they've been carved, and they've been painted. So technically I am done, but with one exception. We decided we were going to put lights in. In preparation for that, I went through and I poked two holes in each of the ram's heads for the lights. And on the back, I went ahead and carved a channel for the wiring and where the lights will be going. And uh, it's going to take some work and some finesse to get the lights in. Uh, there's 20 LEDs per panel, so 40 total. And I did take some time. As many of you know, I do my own LEDs. I've got 20 flickering yellow and 20 solid yellow. And each one of these little boxes on the panel will get one of each. And I'll mix them up. I might put a fl flickering yellow in this side on this box. And then over here, instead of putting it there, I'll put it over here. You know, I'll alternate them. Or what I might do is I just might mix them all up and just, you know, see where we get. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't decided. But the uh, process of putting the lights in is fairly easy. I've got to stick a light in the hole, bend it over, make my connections with a, another wire to run up to this one, do the same thing, and just daisy chain it all the way over to here, and then leave some extra wire there for hookup. Which is basically what I did with this one. Here, we'll get this turned around. And, as you can see, got the wire leads, went, made my connections here for the lights, and it just runs straight up the panel, and I left some excess for hookup up top. And then, uh, as I'm putting these in, I put a piece of Gorilla Tape over the top of the wiring to hold the wiring into place, until I can come back and fill it with clear caulking. Which is what I'm going to have to do on that one. But basically, I started at the end and just worked my way up each line. <sighs> Difference with this, it's more of a S curve instead of a straight line. So, gonna be fun. But uh, anyway, that's our next step. Another milestone made. We went and got all the wiring done. We got lights in and the spots where they need to be, and they're wired from over there around and down to here and I left some excess so I can get get them hooked up when I get them installed in the panel and I'll trim that down when we go to put them in the, uh, install them in the haunt. Now the next step is sealing them in. Uh, right now I've just got a little bit of Gorilla Tape here and there along the way to hold them into place. This is what I'm using. It's clear silicone caulking 230 comes out looking like a thick white cock, but dries clear, which is what I want. And I simply put this in a caulking gun, and we squirt some down the channel, and smooth it out. It's a putty knife. And then we set it off to dry. <laughs> we are so close to being done with this. Alright, caulking is done. Wires are sealed in on both panels. Now, uh, weather here has been really weird. Uh, we've been kind of on a roller coaster heat-wise. One week it will be in the upper 80s. Next week it will be in the mid-60s. Uh, another week it will be somewhere in between, like in the 70s. Uh, right now we're upper 60s to low 70s. <laughs> Which means the caulking is probably going to take a while to dry. 
So I've got my heater on over there. Turned it on yesterday to warm the shop up. Set to 80. It's about 78 in here. I'm hoping that's going to help the caulking dry. Uh, it is in. did fill the grooves up and everything, and it's fairly thick, so it will take a while to dry. I'm hoping it'll be dry enough tomorrow so we can get in here and get this project finished. But it's probably going to end up being a couple of days. I cannot attach these to the wall panels with the caulking wet because it won't dry. It will end up mildewing and just causing problems down the line. So I have to wait till the caulking is totally dry. So it may be a day or two before I get out here and get this finished up. Uh, as far as finishing it up, once the caulking is dry, if you remember when I first started, uh, I didn't have the pattern set, you know, what pattern I was going to do. And I had Gorilla Tape stretched over the seams. We are going to redo that after the caulking is dry to help reinforce the foam a bit. Uh, it won't take long. Uh, then we got to mount them to the wall panels and we'll be pretty much done. Only a little bit more to go and we'll be done. Uh, caulking's dried. It's been several days. Uh, so it's all dried. I just got done putting the Gorilla Tape on the uh, cut scene that they, the company that makes this puts into it so you can break it apart. That will help keep it from breaking as easily. It won't stop it, but it will help prevent it, uh, hopefully. Now my next step is I've got to get the frame up on the table and we got to get these attached to the frame. Okie dokie. We are finished. Got both the panels attached. And I'm just noticing it looks like I lost an LED. I'll have to fix that. I'll do that at a later date. It'll be easy enough. Uh, but anyway, we got the panels attached. I just got done painting the screw heads. They need to dry. Once they dry, I can put these away. And then we can start setting up for the next project. As to the next project, it's going to be a couple of weeks before I get started on it, more than likely. Uh, we're starting back to work this weekend, and money's a little tight, and I need to buy supplies. But I will say this, next project is going to be for the clown display. We are getting rid of the hammering clown. That's that huge pneumatic clown that swings the hammer down, hits the head, and then the water shoots up in the air. We're getting rid of that prop and getting a new one. So, anyway, that's going to be it. See you in the next vlog. Stay spooky, stay toxic.